Hi everyone, welcome back to Pharmacology Classes by MSR. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, please do subscribe for the latest updates. In this video, I am going to explain about the predictability and preventability assessment of ADR. So what is prediction? Prediction is nothing but you are assuming about the future thing. That is nothing but prediction. So for example, you say tomorrow it may rain. So something is happening in the future and you are predicting it before, assuming it before. That is called as prediction. When coming to the prevention, something is going to happen, you are going to stop it. That is prevention. So this prediction and prevention both play a major role to improve the patient safety to reduce the risk of the drugs and to improve patient safety along with the money saving for the pharmaceutical company. So how we can expect a reaction to be happened? So a drug may cause certain ADRs that is expected. So how you can expect is the product information of that particular drug may give you the expectedness of that particular reaction. So that may be available from the package insert or from the summary of the product characteristics. SPC is nothing but summary of product characteristics. So sometimes it will be very difficult to identify or distinguish the ADR from the drug action or the because the disease whatever is being treated that will be acting the drug which is being used for the treatment and the ADR reaction may have same physiology or pathological conditions. So it will be difficult to distinguish between the ADR and the disease being treated. So by using certain approaches, we can access the possible drug related ADRs. The first thing is, we have to be sure that the drug we ordered only we have received. Both the drug ordered and received are the same and the patient is taking the drug on time as prescribed by the physician as prescribed dose. Then we have to take proper history of that particular patient with proper examination. The full medical history should be taken and the first diagnosis should be to identify the ADRs and we have to collect the information from the patient in such a way that they should give explanation about any ADR whether he has to having certain any underlying diseases, what type of food he is been taking, he is using any other medicines or over the counter medicines he is using or any other herbal medicines he is using, all the information should be collected. Then he should be investigated properly to know what medical issue he has been affected with, whether it is really related with the drug that we are using or any other condition should be determined. The other approaches include the time relationship, whether the ADR is being developed immediately after taking a drug or it is developed later. Then the physical examination should be done and the required lab investigation should be conducted. There are few exemptions in medicines like the steroids may induce the dermal atrophy, extra pyramidal reactions etc. And whenever possible we have to give proper clear explanation about the ADR with accurate diagnosis. Other approach we can do is de-challenge and re-challenge. De-challenge is nothing but either we will reduce that particular dosage of the particular drug or we will suspend the use of that particular drug that is de-challenging. Then we will see whether the ADR is occurring or not. In the second condition is re-challenging. Nothing but reintroducing the suspected medicine after doing the de-challenging. But this re-challenging should be done with ethical considerations because there may be uh, more risk. The reoccurrence of a reaction can occur. So it should be uh, done with ethical considerations. Then after that, we have to check the pharmacology of that particular medicine. We have to check whether that particular ADR is mentioned in the package insert or any other reference. Then we have to remember that if, the rea if that particular ADR is not mentioned in the package insert or the summary information, then we have to report that 
ADR whatever is done it is not been reported and we have to report that ADR to the particular member who is considered in the hospital or we have to report to the pharmacovigilance centers. Moving on to preventability assessment to prevent by assessing that particular ADR we are going to prevent it. So according to Oliver there is no gold standard for preventability assessment to assess the preventability of the ADR. But Shomok and Thornton they have proposed certain criteria to be considered for the assessment of preventability. In 1992 they have given certain questionnaire so depending upon that we can assume or preventability assessment can be done and in 1994 Peterson have given a scaling system so according to that a panel of three physicians will be involved and depending upon their judgment the preventability assessment can be done. The modified Shomok and Thornton scale so this there are certain questions to assess the preventability so depending upon the questions they can be identified as definitely preventable probably preventable or not preventable ADRs so the definitely preventable the questions involved was there a history of allergy or previous reaction for that particular drug was the drug involved inappropriate for the patient condition was the dose route of administration or inappropriate for the patient age weight or disease condition any toxic substance is present in the drug serum concentration was there a known treatment for the particular ADR? If one or more question says yes, then it is definitely preventable ADR. When coming to the probable preventable condition, was required therapeutic drug monitoring or other necessary laboratory tests that are not performed? Was a drug interaction involved with the ADR? There is poor compliance involved in ADR? Or preventive measures are not prescribed or administered to the patient? If any one question indicates yes, one or more is yes, then it is probably preventable ADR. If no criteria is not fulfilled, then it is not preventable ADR. In the year of 2002, Oliver proposed a method for the preventability assessment. So in this assessment scale, there are three sets of questions which are related to patients, drug and prescription. So here is Oliver's scale. The questionnaire is given separately for the drug, patient and the prescription and the scoring system has also has been mentioned. So if the score, total score, if it is less than or equal to 2, the ADR is considered as non-preventable. If it is up to 8, it is potentially preventable. If it is more than 9, then the ADR is definitely preventable. In the year of 1996, Dartnell propose six questions to measure the availability of drug therapy. So these questions are whether the suspected drug is judged to be indicated or contraindicated, whether the dosage form which is used is according to the recommended conditions, whether the adequate monitoring is done, adequate counseling is done or any alternative drug or no drug is been given or undertaken, whether the admission is rightly regardless of the inappropriate use of drug. Among all reported ADRs, certain ADRs can be prevented if they are monitored properly and proper care is taken. So ADRs, we will monitor them in a patient, but the patients are of two types, inpatients and outpatients. Inpatients indicates a hospitalized one. Outpatients are the outdoor patients. So the analysis of this ADRs is best done in the hospitalized patients because they are convenient and we will have direct supervision of the patients. So in 1993, within 37 days, among 420 hospitalized patients, 73 drug-related adverse reports are been recorded. In this 73, 27 are adverse drug events, 34 were potential adverse drug events, and 12 consisted of problem orders. So the preventability assessment is divided into four categories. The ADR is definitely preventable, probably preventable, not definitely preventable or not probably preventable. Right? The ADR, if we are monitoring them properly, the ADR is definitely preventable. It may be preventable. It is definitely not preventable maybe it is not preventable. So four categories have been identified. In the year of 1994, 
the Shenmukhan Thornton criteria has evaluated 203 ADR reports among this 203 38 reports were preventable so out of this preventable reports the majority are due to the using of drug having known drug allergy history already a patient is having allergic history but without proper knowledge they are using the drug again so ADR is developed the absence of anticoagulant or thrombolytic drug therapy monitoring and poor drone renal dosage adjustment a patient is having renal disorder renal insufficiency patients are there but the dose is not been adjusted that is the reason for the development of ADR a method to detect the preventable ADRs is done by the p method preventability method so that and depending on certain criteria preventability criteria the healthcare professional or the healthcare practitioner if whether he is giving incorrect dose incorrect route of administration incorrect duration of the dose drug drug interactions are not been properly monitored necessary medication is not given any withdrawal symptoms are not noticed so there are certain question are given we have to answer yes no unknown or not applicable for the particular condition when coming to the questions for the product or the drug whether the drug is poor quality drug is administered or the counterfeit drug is administered coming to the patient questions non complaints whether the patient is not following what the physician has suggested self medication with the over the counter drugs is done yes no unknown or not applicable so depending upon these questions we can prevent identify the preventable adrs